Rats, fleas, and humans. 14th century Europe. A bloody and deadly combination. <coughs> the grim reality of having the plague in the 14th century was if you sneezed on your daughter, you just killed her. The bacteria that causes plague, Yersinia pestis, lives in rats. Certain rats have developed an immunity to Yersinia pestis, but not the fleas that feed on their blood. A toxin produced by Yersinia pestis blocks the abdomen of the flea so that it can't actually swallow the blood that it sucks out of the rat. So it leaps from a rat, it lands on a human being, and it bites the human, and vomits some of the rat's blood infected with Yersinia pestis back into the human victim. And the first victim of the plague is now walking around 14th century Europe. If you were unlucky enough to get the plague, you would either get the pneumonic version or the septicemic version. In the pneumonic version, the organism settles in your lungs. And over a four, five, perhaps seven day period, your lungs essentially just liquefy and you'll cough them up and die. In the septicemic version of plague, the bacteria inhibit your body's ability to clot. Essentially, you are bleeding to death from everywhere at the same time. So if you were caring for a loved one in your home who had the plague, who was coughing all over you, the grim reality of it was that you knew that by the end of the week, everybody else in the house lucky but if you're dying of the plague in 1349 you're just doing what all your neighbors are doing